Hey folks, Alan Mandick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today's video, we're taking a look at building your own hand planishing hammer for under $75. So when I'm referring to a hand planishing hammer, I mean a style like the Echo GL2 where you are the frame of the planishing hammer. You have a handheld power unit, a dolly or different dies you might use to back up the metal you're working with, and you function as the frame in between the two of them. I find this can actually be really useful even with high quality top of the line planishing hammers. The ram's head unit that we have at the shop that I work at. I take that off the frame from time to time and use it in this fashion because sometimes I just can't get a frame around something into the location I need to get into to work on a vehicle or on a project away from the stand mounted design that I have. So this would be great for a do it yourself or, or somebody who's maybe a little bit newer to the metal shaping world and they're not really looking to spend $2,000 plus on a planishing hammer just to get a few small tasks done. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the parts I'm using. We're going to discuss building it, and then we're going to go ahead and see it in operation. Now, I sourced these parts from various different locations. Harbor Freight is where I started, but they didn't have everything I needed, so I got some items from Amazon. All the links down in the description will be Amazon links, so it'll be easy for you to get everything you need from one location, still stay within the budget, and you might help me out a little bit, because with my Amazon affiliate account, it really helps me every time you use one of those links and make a purchase, even if it's not the item that I'm linking. Now when I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up this air hammer, this is not the one that I wanted. I wanted the smallest, cheapest one they had. Down in the description, there's an air hammer that I think is better than this one for this application, and it's going for the same price as this one. So you can pick that up from Amazon. Now, when you're choosing an air hammer for a situation like this, you want cheap and you want short. Now, the reason I say that is both to fit it into tighter places and fit the budget, but also because a planishing hammer is not the same as a full-on air hammer. With something like a Snap-on or a Matco heavy-duty, full, long-barrel, powerful air hammer, they work by less blows per minute and a longer stroke, so every blow, every hit is hitting hard, like you swinging a hammer. That's the way the more expensive and better air hammers function. A planishing hammer functions more like you using a hammer and a dolly with shorter strikes rapidly. So you're looking for something with higher blows per minute and a shorter stroke. That's again where I said that the one that I found on Amazon I think is a better choice than this one because it has higher blows per minute and a much shorter stroke than this unit here. Now next up I picked up an air pedal from Amazon. The air pedal is a pneumatic control valve that you operate with your foot so you don't have to be trying to work a trigger the whole time you're operating this hammer. So you can go ahead and hammer away, control it with your foot, dial off of it, dial back into it as you need. You need an air hose to go between the pedal and the hammer. Next up I included an air regulator in this setup as well. When you're running a planishing hammer, like I said, it's all about rapid light hits. So the Regulator allows you to dial the air pressure down so that it's not hitting as hard, but still hitting fairly regularly. You might have one at the wall already. I like having one on the unit because then I don't have to adjust the wall every time I switch between this and a grinder or something else. Last but not least is the hammers themselves. The actual units that will be striking on the metal via the pneumatic force. You have a lot of options when it comes to these. You just need a 401 shank hammer head for this unit. Flush set rivet setters are a good option. They come in a range of different sizes from two inch down to like three quarters of an inch. Personally, I find between inch and three eighths to two inch to be the sweet spot for a planishing hammer head. The wider it is, the bigger it is, the more contact area it's gonna have as you're flowing over that metal, and the less likely you're gonna hammer away in one spot too much, and I find you just get a smoother, better finish in the end. So let's go ahead and get into actually making this thing. First step is you take that air hammer that you have there and you cut the darn handle off of it. What you're looking to do is get rid of the trigger valve off of the unit. You're gonna be operating this thing via the foot pedal that I put in this kit here, so you don't need the trigger valve anymore. It's actually in the way. You wanna be able to hold this thing by the barrel and flow smoothly over the metal. If you're holding it by the trigger and operating it via the trigger, I promise you, you're not gonna flow nearly as smoothly over the metal as you should be with a planishing hammer. So you go ahead and personally, I went to the bandsaw and I attacked this thing with the bandsaw. 
straightforward way to do it. A hacksaw would do. There's a lot of different ways you can cut it off. Saws all, whatever works for you. Then I took the unit, I went over to the belt sander and I sanded down the rough edges that were left over of the handle. Now, honestly, I feel like I sanded a little bit too much off of the handle. I probably should have left just a little more meat there and you'll see why in a minute. Now you can see after we're done cutting and sanding down the old handle, now we have a small inlet hole to power the unit with. So next we take it over to the vise of the bench, set it up in the vise, and go ahead and drill out that hole, stepping it up to the size we need for the tap we're going to use. I got quarter inch NPT hose ends on this line, so that's the size I'm going to drill and tap it to. So I went ahead and drilled it all the way out to 7 16 for a quarter inch pipe tap. Here is where I feel like I probably could have left a little more material on the handle because I would have had more material to get those threads into. I ended up with a little bit less than I like, but it will still function. Now I'm first going to start my assembly process by taking the power unit that I've already prepared as you've seen, hooking up the air hose to the pressure port that I created by drilling and tapping out the inlet fitting. Next I'm going to assemble the regulator and the pedal assembly. Alright, so now I have my pedal assembly with the regulator and the adapters. Our next step is to take our lead hose that's already attached to the tool on the other end and attach it to the pedal on this end. And now I have the assembled unit. I have the spring collar design on here with the power unit and the hammer die and then the control side of things. So let's see how this thing runs. So now I'm ready to test this thing out. I got hearing protection here, eye protection, because this thing is loud and you will hurt your ears if you run one of these continually without hearing protection. I have the 16 gauge metal here that I tack together these two pieces and the piece has a bit of a bow to it. It needs to be flattened out so it can be welded the rest of the way. This is an operation I would often use a planishing hammer for. Tack the piece together and then take it to the hammer, smooth it out. So I've got my power unit here. I have one of the Harbor Freight dollies from this video where I checked out the Harbor Freight hammer and dolly set. And I'm ready to go ahead and hammer away on this piece. So now I'm gripping the barrel of the hammer unit and this is how I'm going to use it. I'm going to go ahead and flow along the piece to smooth out what I'm trying to smooth out. So that was just a really quick demonstration of what this thing can be used for. I'm not here to teach you how a planishing hammer can be used, just give you maybe a few examples and show you the operation of building this one. I use planishing hammers all the time in sheet metal shaping, in dent repair. They are powerful tools, but they're also very dangerous tools. You can ruin things just as easily, if not more e no, definitely more easily than you can fix what you're trying to do. Practice, practice, practice if you're going to use one of these. This one, as I said, this unit is a little stronger, it hits a little harder than I like. I probably should have run a little bit lower air pressure. Something to note is that whatever hammerhead you end up getting for this unit, the one I have here has quite a bit of machine marks on it. It's got some rough edges at, at the outer edge. I highly recommend sanding, polishing, radiusing the corners on these pieces, these dollies, such as I recommended in this video over here about cleaning up your body hammers to make them work better. Same principle applies here. Another thing to note is when you're using one of these, you really need to be careful about how you're flowing over the metal. I got plenty of tooling marks when I was just doing this because I got a little off center when I was using it, I angled a little bit and the corners of the hammerhead dug in. That is definitely a problem you need to watch out for when using a handheld version of this. Really, this is what somebody like Harbor Freight with their planishing hammer that they used to sell anyway, I don't know if they do right now, this is all it is. It is a, 
air hammer with the trigger locked out. I don't even think they cut the handle off the thing. They just leave that on there and a pedal assembly. So you could put this together. You could build a frame if you wanted to, and you could have a decent quality planishing hammer to do some jobs. It's nowhere near the quality of a professional grade one, but it will allow you to do at least some operations and it'll fill the niche of having one when you just don't. You know, if you had the money to spend on a Proline planishing hammer, I say go ahead and do it. They are great quality tools and they are going to work better than this thing will at the end of the day. But if you're on a budget, if you just need to get through one job, the setup here could help you out and could really get you there. Just be careful because you can ruin metal. Practice, practice, practice before you go to whatever project you are trying to do with this tool. All right, folks, I hope you found this video informative. Drop it a like if you did. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have a planishing hammer you really like? Do you, is it an expensive one? Do you have a budget option that you think other people might wanna check out? Or do you think you're gonna go ahead and build yourself one of these? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.